Connections Tarot, etc. I am Laura, and today I have channeled Glenn Miller. Actually, I channeled Glenn Miller a long time ago, um, but a few months ago, it is February now, I channeled him back in December, um, so before Christmas, if I remember correctly, which I probably don't, and um, I've been busy with some stuff, but uh, yeah, so I channeled him. And growing up, I used to listen to Glenn Miller records with my grandmother who introduced me to him when I was a very young girl, at the age of six, five or six. And I've been hooked ever since. Um, Glenn Miller um, had a very great quality about him. He was a musician, a composer, and a talent agent, which a lot of people did not know that part about him. He was very much a businessman. I did not track his astrology or his numerology. I didn't bother to look it up as I decided I would just let him come and speak for himself. He came through, but he's actually very reserved and shy, and he's also a very private person or soul. Um, he was a very private person. So when they cross over, like I said before, I think in a video, I don't remember, but I might have said that when they pass, when they cross over, they have, their soul is the same as it was on Earth, more elevated, but the same type of characteristics and things like that. Um, so of that nature, Glenn Miller was, that's not his full name, by the way. Um, he was just a really nice, down-to-earth guy, quiet, shy, reserved, but knew talent when he saw it. Now, so his, he didn't really rise to fame until in his 40s. Correction, sorry about that. He rose to fame roughly around 1939 to 1944. And he was happily married to his college sweetheart, Helen Berger. And they had children. I think they were all adopted. I don't remember. Yes, they adopted two children. There's something about that. When he came by, he sat with his legs crossed and his hands over his legs, and um, he wore glasses. But I mean, that's a given, right? And um, he just, I wasn't expecting him to be super humble. I knew he was going to be humble, but I didn't expect him to be so, so modest about his um, fame. So when he came through and I spoke to him, I asked him questions um, like right off the topic, being in Aries, I got straight to the point and I said, do you have any regrets? After saying, you know, welcome, I'm a huge fan. He was just like, thank you. Thank you, I appreciate that. That's great that someone of your age and somebody born, you know, <laughs> with your, in your era liked the music of my time. Um, I just wanted things to be upbeat and happy because World War II obviously was not a good time. So I rose to fame in my 40s and it was very short-lived. And right away I got a sense that it was there's impending doom that was going to happen in his life. And I feel like he knew somebody was watching him or something really sketchy was going on there. Um, I feel like there was a few people that didn't like him because at times he could be a bit outspoken if he saw somebody do something wrong or somebody didn't like, uh, he didn't like what they did or what they stood for. He made it very clear he was against what the German Nazis were doing, not the Germans in general, okay, the German Nazis and what they were doing in World War II, um, as any rational person would be. and. He, he let it be known at the time, which was very controversial you back then. I mean, speaking up now, you can get in trouble. So imagine how much trouble you'd get back in the 1940s, speaking up at that time. Um, so he spoke up. I don't know to who, but it was apparently well known that he was a good guy and he didn't stand for that. And I guess he had some Jewish friends, um, but he did like, I don't know if he fought in the war, but I do know he composed and played music for the war in World War II, which is really cool. I don't know how that came about, per se. I feel like I'm not getting the full story. Just like when I asked him about his death. 
Glenn was supposed to fly from the United Kingdom to Paris on December 15, 1944. The media then declared his disappearance on 1924, 1944. That's nine days after he passed away. Not only is that incredibly sketchy, for obvious reasons I'm going to get into in a minute here, but also um, it's so sketchy that his family are looking into it right now and they started to investigate as of 2019. Which really stressed out and concerned and just went, I don't really want to talk about it. All I'm going to say is what happened shouldn't have happened. So when I went and looked it up, his plane, dis there, he flew a plane, somebody drove it and it, the engine shut off or it disappeared or something like that. I have to question why it took them, what, like 30 days or so? It was actually nine days, not 30. For them to have found his body and announced that he was deceased. When he had a show that was due, I think, the very next morning or in the next couple of hours. I'm feeling like it's the next day. It was the next morning that he was due to play. But anyway, um, it wasn't kosher. So his death, 100%, is conspiracy theory. And somebody was out to get him. I don't know if the pilot um, was in on it or if they set the pilot, pilot up as well. But I can tell you, it was not allegedly, so I don't get sued. It was not um, by accident. Now, normally I don't go into conspiracy theories and stuff like that unless I know for sure it's a thing, but I, you know, and this is one of those times I know for sure his death was not normal. And I'm glad to find out that I think it's either his grandchild or his great grandchild is going back and is looking into that because I don't think they'll ever find the answers. In fact, I, I, I was, he was told like, leave it alone. He wants it left alone. He doesn't want to talk about it. So I don't think they're going to find the answers, but if they do, I didn't act here. I didn't say here in this video that I know for sure if they're going to find the answers or not, because I don't know. I don't know, but I do know his, his death once again, remember was not an accident. That was a setup. Why I'm not sure. I think it was because he was outspoken and I think it was because he had some friends that were Jewish, but I'm not sure. And something, he said something about Jewish ancestry, but I'm not sure what that is. I tried to look it up. I couldn't find it. So if you know the answer to that, let me know. Um, so anyway, super nice guy, very reserved and quiet, very humbled, um, very grounded. Um, the song drum, drum boogie is just playing in my head right now. Um, but yeah, so he was dressed in a suit and tie and randomly, I don't know why Desi Ar Arnaz and Lucille Ball were there. I don't even know if they have even met him um, or what the time frame is there, but I was picturing them dance. I saw a picture he was showing me of them dancing to his music in a big like speakeasy type of room. I don't know what that means. Um, <laughs> so I don't know if that has anything to do with him at all. If he was a fan of them, what that was about. I don't even think it was the same era. I'm gonna have to look it up. So yes, it was the same era, which is really cool. Maybe they met, maybe they didn't, I don't know. But I do know he was good friends with Benny Goodman and uh, Louis Armstrong was a big fan of his. He was against racism at all costs. Back in that time, if you were not, if you were outspoken about racism, it was a problem. Um, and the wrong, that kind of information in the wrong hands, especially when you're a big deal, and he has such a following and he made up his own music um, type of genre, swing type jazz um, music. And I don't know how to describe it just as other than amazing. Um, and with him being able to make that kind of music, he had a lot of power. And I think somebody wanted to shut down that power and keep him quiet and not have an influence over people in the war and what they're saying. And I do feel like that speaks a lot of truth. So I'm gonna go with that. Um, like 
right now, even as I'm doing the reading, his energy is coming through and I'm picking up some stuff now um, that I'm saying. Which makes it really hard for me to be able to put into words what I already know and what I'm being told by Glenn himself. But anyway, so this is what I picked up. And that's all I got. He, you know, he had a happy marriage, he had a happy life. His fame was short-lived and then he was killed off. So do with that information as you will. I am just the messenger. So, <laughs> uh, thank you for watching my videos. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. Please do not forget to hit that notification bell down below if you would like to be notified whenever my videos come on. Thank you so much for watching my video and I hope you're a Glenn Miller fan too. I will talk to you later and have a great day.